The Mercedes EQV was the first full electric model in the super large MPV segment, claiming to be the people carrier of the future, with zero emissions and a 213 mile WLTP rated range. There are few practical compromises with the battery installation and quality levels are way higher than you'd expect from a van derived product. Inevitably, you pay handsomely for that, but if you're able to, then, for the time being anyway, in terms of drive range, size and quality, there's nothing to touch this Mercedes in its sector. We would have thought it to be fairly self-evident that a very large EV of this size needs a very large battery to propel it, but apparently not. Direct rivals have nothing approaching the kind of battery size offered by this EQV, 100 kilowatt hours, 90% of which is actually usable. As a result, this Mercedes can take you much further on a single charge, 213 miles, than any of its most direct segment challenges. Though not, of course, if you use all the performance available to you from the 204 horsepower asynchronous electric motor which develops 362 newton meters of torque that's nearly as much as you'd get from the diesel unit in a conventional V220D diesel variant. Engage the most dynamic of the available drive modes, that's sport, and 62 miles an hour from rest can be dispatched in 12.1 seconds but you'll be able to watch your battery reserves draining almost visibly in the consumption part of the center dash screen's EQ menu if you drive this Mercedes like that or try to approach the modest 98 mile an hour top speed. You can conserve and potentially replenish your energy store by varying brake regeneration using these steering wheel paddles or by choosing either of the two most frugal drive modes, Eco or Eco Plus Maximum Range, both of which soften throttle response. When the time comes to plug in, an 80% rapid charge is possible in 40 minutes using the 110 kilowatt DC onboard charger. As usual, AC replenishment requires longer but uses less energy. Using the 11 kilowatt AC water-cooled onboard charger, a 0-100% charge is possible in 10 hours. EQV drivers get access to a Mercedes Me Charge network, which can be accessed either via the Mercedes Me app or by using the MBUX screen in the vehicle. Mercedes Me Charge provides access to over 300,000 charging points across Europe without the need for multiple accounts and uh, RFID cards and incorporates multiple charging networks including Polar which is the UK's largest. On the move, uh, cruising of course is largely conducted in impressive silence though because of that you tend to notice things like suspension noise and roar from the tyres and mirrors rather more. All that aside, the drive experience here is much as it would be in a conventionally engined V-Class. Inevitably, given the size of this MPV, it's 5.37 metres long and almost 2.25 metres in width, including the mirrors, and the elephantine curb weight, nearly 2.7 tonnes, this Mercedes can feel a fairly ponderous thing. But there's also a quality and a heft to the way that everything works that helps to differentiate it from the commercial vehicle it's based upon. And with the airmatic air suspension that's fitted to the top spec model, this EQV can waft you about with an almost S-Class like level of comfort. It has to be said that the V isn't a bad looking thing for a big box, which is perhaps why this isn't one of those EQ electric models that Mercedes has decided to completely restyle. Actually, the EQV features minimal changes over the V-Class model it's based upon. The key difference lies with this black panel radiator grille, which is a specific EQ design feature. And in profile, well, these slab sides have had some swage lines and shape built into them, and there are standard roof rails. Only the biggest long wheelbase, extra long variant of this model is being sold in the UK, which is quite a hunk of Stuttgart real estate. 5.37 metres in total length and over 1.9 metres in height. Up front, you're treated to an agreeably high and commanding driving position. Look around and you'll be pleased to know that there's nothing particularly LCV-like about the opulently finished cabin. 
there's not much that's particularly EV-like either. So unless you happen to register the EV power meter that replaces the usual rev counter in the instrument binnacle, or come across the extra EQ menu on the center dash monitor, you'll notice no differentiation over a combustion V-Class model. You're certainly treated to an upmarket ambience thanks to Lugano black leather upholstered seats with armrests and discreet ambient lighting. So it's as different in here from the e Vito van as Mercedes could possibly make it. Adding to the feeling of luxury is a sense of space. There's a yawning gap between the seats so that you could easily head rearwards to separate squabbling children or confer with VIPs should the back area seating configuration permit that. And as you'd expect on an MPV, there's plenty of space to store stuff, though rearward vision is compromised by the third row seating, so you'll really need the standard parking sensors and rear view camera. Media connectivity is provided via this 10.25 inch MBUX central touchscreen, which features Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality and works via this uh, intuitive touchpad sitting in this extended out part of the center stack. Uh, the main screen also features the EV specific EQ menu that we mentioned earlier, which gives you charging options, uh, battery consumption info, and an energy flow monitor so that you can see the electric powertrain working in real time. Time to move into the second row, where the standard electric sliding doors that you get on both sides of the vehicle glide back to reveal an enormous seating area, which impressively hasn't been at all compromised by the underfloor need to accommodate an enormous 90 kilowatt hour battery. There are only two individual middle seats here. Unlike a conventionally engined V-Class, there's no option of having a three-person middle bench. Provided you've avoided base sports spec though, you do get that ordinary model's table package, which includes this folding table from which you can extend flaps that provide a work surface for passengers on either side. Like the two individual seats, this table unit can slide backwards and forwards Now, if all the rear seats are forward facing, getting to the very rearmost third row is a touch more awkward. Still, at least once you're finally in, the EQV's boxy shape means the very back here is suitable for adults rather than just kids. You get a three person bench, and with the middle row chairs normally positioned, it offers plenty of space for legs and knees, plus ample headroom. Let's finish with a look at luggage space. Before we go lifting this tailgate, it's worth mentioning that there's the convenience of this separately lifting rear glass section if all you want to do is throw in a few lighter items or perhaps you don't have the space to open up the full hatch. You certainly have to stand back when it does activate. Once it's up, a canopy is created, which is quite helpful in bad weather if you're loading in luggage or trying to corral the kids around the car. Because, as mentioned previously, the EQV is based on the largest extra-long V-Class body shape, the luggage space that you get at this point isn't very much compromised by the positioning of the third seating row. With this rearmost bench normally positioned, there's a massive 1,410 litres of carriage space. Of course, if you're able to take the second and third row chairs out, you basically get yourself a removal van with all the second and third row seats out. An EQV offers up to 5,010 litres of space. Will the EQV catch on? You might wonder, given the prices being asked here and the practical charging limitations. Mind you, 500 miles in a day could be achievable with careful lunch break charging from taxi driver and limousine operators. And of course, the further you go, the bigger the chance you'll be able to recover the initial upfront asking price investment, particularly if you regularly drive in the London congestion charge or ultra low emission zones. Few would have guessed Mercedes would base its second all electric model on the humble V-Class but this is a comprehensively engineered and very forward-thinking product. 
in a decade or so, a combustion engine people carrier of this size will be very rare indeed. And when that happens, we'll look back at the EQV as being the originator of a very significant trend.